Hello, Douglas. Welcome. Please, could you introduce yourself and your role, as well as your connection with the SHARE program? Thank you. I'm Douglas Mulangwa, a hydrologist with Minister of Water and Environment, Uganda, in the Director of Water Resources Management. Also, I'm a master's student at Makere University. With the SHARE program, well, I've worked with a team of scientists from University of Reading under the FADUM project in conjunction with the Uganda Red Cross Society and other partners to evaluate forecasts from global flood awareness system for use in the early action protocol for Uganda. Thank you. Please tell us, what was the status of early warning and forecasting before you were involved in SHARE? Uh, before the involvement in SHARE, well, we used to act in response to a flooding event. This was after an event has occurred. We used to look at different quantitative measures, like looking at peak water levels to determine the flood marks. This was because there was no operational flood forecasting system in the country. However, there is one under development by, in, in the Directorate of Water Resources Management. And so how has SHEA research supported early warning and forecasting capacity? SHEA has helped build the capacity of local forecasters, starting with the summer placement at University of Reading under the FADUM project in 2019 that I attended. I and other participants were introduced to probabilistic forecasting and how to use that information to translate it into humanitarian action. Thanks. And so in a nutshell, what is the impact of SHEAR on your operational work with early warnings? Uh, SHEAR has helped us change our entire perspective towards uh, uh, flood response, moving from response to preparedness where we act before an event occurs. It has also changed our paradigm from working with only science, but also involved, now we are involving the local community in the actions that we choose to take. She has helped us have the early action protocol for Uganda developed and approved by the International Federation of the Red Cross Society. We are moving swiftly from response to preparedness. Thank you. Thank you very much, Douglas. Hi, can you introduce yourself and your role in the SHEAR Landslip project? Hi, my name is Sumit Kumar and I'm a geologist working for Geological Survey of India. I have been involved with the Landslip project which aim to help reduce impacts of hydrologically related landslide multi-hazards and build resilience to landslides in vulnerable and hazard prone areas of South Asia. And what was the state of landslide forecasting in India before you were involved in the Shear Landslip project, Sumit? Uh, yeah, see, landslides have caused immense loss of life and properties in mountainous regions of India. Although a lot of different studies and projects have been conducted about landslides in India by, different, by GSI and also different researchers, mm -hmm. the loss of life and properties remains on the rise due to this hazard. Given the number and extent of landslides in some of the regions, mitigation on each and every landslide is not feasible and also not possible. A regional landslide forecasting system provides an opportunity to support disaster risk reduction efforts to these hazards. And I can say that prior to the CF funded landslip project, there was no regional forecasting initiative in India. Landslip have provided an opportunity to explore how a government led regional forecasting system for landslides could be established in India. And, and how has the landslip project supported um, specifically the landslide early warning and, and forecasting capacity in India, would you say? Yeah. The landslip project have developed a prototype landslides forecasting system for the two pilot areas in India for the two districts. It has created it has created a knowledge product which will support on an ongoing vision of GSI to develop a national landslide forecasting center, which will be established in Kolkata and led by the Geological Survey of India. And different relationships have been established with the by, with different NGOs, the state government organization like State Disaster Management Authority, District, District Disaster Management Authority, and the national agency like Indian Meteorological Department and IMD and NCMRWF to specifically consider landslides early warning in India. And how has this sheer landslide research supported actually the, the robust use of these sort of landslide forecasts um, in, uh, that you've been um, leading? Okay, yeah. Landscape have enabled us to work with experts from different domains from around the world in different disciplines to develop a prototype 
for forecasting system that considers landscape, meteorological, and social dynamics. For the past two monsoon seasons, GSI have issued a daily landslide forecast bulletin to the district authorities in our two pilot areas. Through these experiences, landslip have developed or helped the Geological Survey of India in the development of its future roadmap for a national landslide forecasting center at Kolkata, ensuring a lasting legacy from the project. Thank you so much, Sumit. Thank you. Thank you very much.
people and the products are actually being adopted, which is really an achievement. We've Hi, I'm delighted to be here with our colleague uh, George Otieno from um, ICPAC, the Regional Climate Centre for the IGAD region in East Africa. And he's going to tell us about the advances that have taken place um, within ICPAC uh, um, as a result of the activities under the SHEAR programme. George, over to you. Yes, I am George Otieno, a climate scientist at ICPAC, supported through FOPAC SHEAR programme. ICPAC is IGAD Center for Climate Services and Related Application, and is also one of the World Meteorological Organization accredited as Regional Climate Center, RCC. Its main role is to provide climate information and services across different sectors within the IGAD region. A dissemination platform, which is very important within uh, ICPAC, is Greater Horn of Africa Climate Outlook Forum. I'm here to update you on the SHEAR program achievements at ICPAC. So you're wondering what has changed as a result of ICPAC funding through SHEAR. First is objective seasonal forecast system. FOPAC, WISER, and SWIFT have supported the development of a new objective forecast system for seasonal forecasting. This is a shift from a subjective system which was not able to support systematic focus-based action to an objective focus system. The new system involves averaging all, all the available global focus models. And currently there's an effort to have a, a weighted approach towards arriving at skillful models. The focus from this new system are now verifiable and so the skill information would be available to stakeholder and to ensure appropriate confidence and trust. The second bit is sharing learnings. ICPAC being a regional climate center, RCC has been mentioned before, has spearheaded the learning on the use of focus-based action principles from Kenya context. And especially within the, uh, the advances in the drought, uh, the drought national early warning system to those of other IGAD countries this has now resulted into the development of a roadmap to operationalize and implement FBA in other IGAD countries. It involves a range of national and international agencies like World Food Program, Food Agriculture Organization, amongst others. What this means is we are developing a coordinated approach across agencies in the implementation of the FBA. ICPA can support this further through its newly established Drought Operational Center, which was recently launched by the President of Kenya, His Excellency Uru Mwegai Kenyatta. The DOC will provide a vehicle so that the gains from FOPAC and other related activities can be shared across the region. In summary, we hope that ICPAC would support and facilitate a shift towards a more effective and anticipatory drought management across the region. However, we recognize there's still a lot of work that remains to be done across the region to implement these new advances. Thank you very much. Thank you, George. Thank you. Hello, my name is Petro Rohani, and I'm a researcher at the University of Sussex and a co-I on the SHEAR funded project called POPAC. And I'm joined today by two of my colleagues in Nairobi, who I've been working with over the past few years. Uh, Lillian. Hello, everyone. My name is Lillian Dongo, the thematic lead for agriculture and food security at the Regional Center for Mapping of Resources for Development, RCMRD. RCM Thank you, Lillian. Uh, and Shamton Waruru. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Shamton Waruru from National Drought Management Authority in Kenya. Thank you very much, Shantan. And let me start off with you, Shantan. Do you want to tell us maybe what the status of the early warning system was in Kenya prior working on FOPAC? Uh, prior to uh, working with FOPAC or the introduction of FOPAC, our main uh, areas of concern was uh, giving uh, a situation what had happened over the month before using the early warning uh, bulletin. 
And basically this was not very, very helpful because people kept on complaining because they wanted to plan and they kept on asking, what do we intend to anticipate or what do we intend uh, to have the season looking like? And uh, with the introduction of, uh, with the, uh, the coming on board of FOPAC program, which is funded by SHEA, we were able to transit our bulletin uh, from being reactive to anticipatory. And this is whereby we were giving uh, monitoring and we would give issues on VCI and other indicators. Uh, we would give a, like a 10 week lead. And this helped in people to plan and other key stakeholders in drought management to plan because they already knew what to expect. Either it was, uh, we are going to have a good season or we are either going to have a depressed season. And this was very, very helpful. Thank you, Shamton. And maybe, uh... Lillian, how, how was the situation within RCMRD as well? Thank you. So RCMRD was already uh, working with the drug management stakeholders such as MDMA and the county government and the uh, conservation uh, organizations within the country. But our system, such as the Red Blood Division Support uh, Tool, was only providing near real-time information. And this was not sufficient to support um, proactive and you know, early uh, action towards uh, mitigating drought. And so the collaboration with uh, SHARE so for us came at a very opportune time, uh, providing us with an opportunity to strengthen our technical capacities for developing forecast-based systems and also allowing us to have a co-development process for integrating the pipelines for forecasting within the, within the institution. Excellent, thank you. Could, could you maybe, uh, Lillian, show us uh, an example of what currently RCMRD are doing as a result of the research done within FOPAC? So through the support of FOPAC, we have incorporated the mechanism for uh, producing, internally producing the six week uh, vegetation condition index forecast and uh, integrating that workflow within our system so that data ingestion and processing and production of the forecast and dissemination of this forecast is done automatically and in a timely manner. Uh, ensuring that every month uh, the newly generated uh, data is shared to the stakeholders automatically. Brilliant, thank you, Lillian. And then, uh, Shantin, would you mind then telling us how, how these forecasts are uh, useful to the NDMA in terms of making decisions uh, on um, Food, food security and droughts. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, FOPAC has been working towards improving forecasts on flooding and uh, drought in Kenya, and more so I can address the issue of drought, whereby uh, uh, decision makers have been able through FOPAC as a result of capacity building, they have been able to take early action to reduce the impact of hazard events. And uh, I would want to give one example where NDMA, we are, we, are, we are producing the early warning bulletins, which are very, very useful to inform uh, decision makers, including the county and the national government on what to expect in the season. And uh, the early warning bulletin, which are very, very uh, uh, critical, are developed every month by NDMA. And uh, if you look at uh, our bulletin, which we piloted using the, the, the four-pack project, we did seven counties, which uh, gave anticipatory uh, uh, information, which was very, very necessary uh, for key decision makers. This enabled us as key decision makers in matters drought to, uh, to be in a position to uh, disseminate the same to, uh, to the stakeholders. Hey, thanks, Shampton. Um, and thank you, Lillian, also for sharing your experiences of working together with us here on this year funded project. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, my name is Steve Cole from the UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology, and I lead the NFLIX project. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Abdul Lahad. Yeah, I'm um, Abdul Lahad from uh, Senegal, from the Senegalese Med Service. I'm uh, 
the focal point of Netflix at NSM. And I'm a research scientist so working to, uh, with the forecasters to improve the tools and methods. Brilliant. So we had a few questions. So first of all, uh, could you explain what the status of the early warning and forecasting was before you became involved in the NFLEX project? Yeah, yeah, of course. Be, be, uh, before the NFLEX uh, project, uh, we have a limited availability uh, use of convective NAUCAS products. We uh, used to do some NAUCAS, but uh, looking at, uh, you know, at uh, satellite imagery, but we did not have a product like NFLEX to help us um, do, uh, you know, NAUCAS of, uh, of uh, convective storms, of course, and then uh, NAUCAS of uh, floodings. So <clears throat> no, no specific flood risk products did not exist before NPLEX, but uh, yeah, with NPLEX, we develop, yeah, with the development of the tool, we, uh, we, we had new tools, new tool uh, that combine uh, now cast of, now casting of uh, storm, convective storm, and then uh, of uh, floodings using some other tools. Brilliant, yeah, so thank you for that. So, um, how do you think Shear Research has supported your early warning and forecasting capacity? Yeah, with the new, new products available with uh, new data feeds to NSM, and because uh, the CEH feed data to NSM, to, and we installed this, uh, this, this system in our local machines and use the GUI, the NPLIS GUI, to see the products, and also there are there are uh, we can find the, the products on uh, online portals like uh, what we did in the in the test bed, and also the co-development of tools uh, between RSM and CH, and then training because there was uh, two sessions of training at the beginning of the of the project, and then uh, during the project there were two training sessions with uh, the use with the users the users are the forecasters and this was very very useful helpful to the to the user the forecasters to understand more the product uh, or the tool and the product have been trailed during the during now casting test bed as i said earlier because we organized the test bed uh, in 2021 21 and uh, with really positive feedback from the forecasters and users of uh, forecast and warning information. That's, that, thank you very much, Abdulhat, for sharing your experience. We really, really, really appreciate it. So thank you.